In today's live stream video, we're going to discuss how to sell vintage, glassware, pottery, and more. My guests will share their tips and strategies to help make us more successful and profitable resellers. Every Wednesday, I have a live stream, and I usually interview another reseller and have them share their tips, tricks, and techniques to help make us more successful, knowledgeable, and profitable resellers. So if you're interested in reselling, then you are in the right place. I'm going to pop in a chat, say hello to a few people. I saw the chat was filling out nicely. I appreciate you guys coming in. Ping G, thank you. You were the first. My guests are in the chat. Mike Flipping Goodies, good to see you, Mike. Michelle, good to see you as well. Randy, thank you, sir. And Lisa C, great to see you. Sure, the chat will be filling in very shortly. So, um, like I said, we're going to be discussing selling, selling vintage, basically. So, uh, I'm happy to have my guests join me today and discuss selling vintage and uh, I was at the point where I was, a lot of these yard sales, I was seeing a lot of like glassware and pottery and things. It's like, I know very little about them. I did have a guest on many moons ago. We discussed this maybe like a year and a half ago, but um, didn't really remember a lot of it. So I figured I would bring on uh, uh, Michael and Mark on and have them discuss selling vintage glassware and pottery. So I'm going to bring them on and have them introduce themselves. Okay, guys, bring them on and have them introduce themselves. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi. All right, Mark and Michael, why don't you introduce yourself to the people in the chat that don't know you? I, I'm Michael, and this is Mark. Um, he's my husband, and um, we have a YouTube channel, and it's uh, Two Old Guys Vintage and Resale, and we also sell on eBay, uh, also Two Old Guys Vintage and Resale, uh, Facebook, and Instagram, all under the same name, so you won't get too confused. And uh, I have a background in antiques. My mother was an antique dealer and an appraiser, and um, I basically came from the womb at a an auction. And uh, I I've got a few years on me, so um, I base a lot of what we buy by experience. Uh, there are a lot of sellers out there that don't have that experience, but um, they can certainly get it. And there is a market for uh, vintage glassware, pottery, linens. There's a there's actually a market for everything. Uh, it's how you sell yourself, um, how comfortable you make the people that come to your show, um, how honest you are. And um, a lot of times, if you if you go to other shows, which we do, we watch an awful lot of people's shows, we get an idea of what's selling and what's not selling. So um, I basically look at a 50 years, 50, my, I call it my 50 and 100 year anniversary of glassware in China and collectibles. I know that everybody considers now anything that's 20 years or older as being vintage. In my book, it's not. But I go along with the rest of the community because that's the norm. Um, I look at anything that's under 40 years old as being collectible. Okay. I look at anything that is 50 years to 100 years as vintage. And anything that's over 100 years is going to be an antique. And that's that's what I grew up with. So that is basically the um, the guidelines that I use. Okay. But I will use I will use the terms that everyone else uses just because that, that's what people are familiar with. Right. So anyway, we uh, we we purchase uh dependent on what I like and what Mark likes. And um, we look for well-made items. We look for quality items, well-designed items, because those are never actually going to go out of style. There will always be a market for those. Right. Okay. Okay. And you're from the Kansas City, Missouri area? Independence. Independence, Missouri. Yep. Okay. Home of Harry S. Truman. There you go. <laughs> I like the I like people to because like I said, everyone has different opportunities as far as you know thrifting and 
sourcing and things. So I like to tell people, you know, where my guests are from, the kind of area they're from. But uh, uh, obviously, we're going to learn more about, you know, thrifting and yard sailing, garage sailing, and uh, I guess even, even auctions. We can talk a little bit about auctions as well, and especially estate sales. Uh, sure, yeah. Mark, I, I know you said on Johnny's chat you went to an estate sale today, right in your neighborhood. Yes, I did. How did you make out? I he did pretty good. He did good. <laughs> I, of course, I had to go to work to pay for it. But, but I, I, we didn't mention that you uh, work a full time job as well. I I, I work <laughs> for the postal service, right. and come next month, I'll have thirty nine years in with them. But um, we depend a lot on. We used to depend a lot on. Um, thrift stores like the Salvation Army and, and those type of thrift stores. But now um, they're selling most of their worthwhile things online. Yeah. They are, um, they're getting people that are sitting down behind a computer and pulling up sales uh, listings, not sales, but pulling up listings that they're seeing on eBay, which is well, not fine but you're not you're not buying from ebay you're buying from salvation army which is basically free goods given to an organization who turns around and sells them and makes a profit right and uh there's really unless you can get a sleeper there's not a whole lot of big bargains in a, a goodwill or a salvation army anymore we are having um, better, well but then again there's always an exception yeah i think i think it's I mean, even like when i have clothes sellers on or I, I i'm trying to get more into hard goods but i still have a lot of clothing and uh you, you get lucky every once in a while but i think it's kind of uh, if you don't go frequently you kind of miss it you know you We're gotta go at different times of the day and you got to be there early morning when they're you know they're having their, their tag sales or whatever and um, we're having better luck at um uh, estate sales right now right Right. State sales, and we have what we call here in, in Kansas City, we have swap and shop, where basically it's a it's a drive-in theater where people pull in their trucks, pull in their cars, set up some tables, and throw their stuff out on the table. Okay. And we we've been very fortunate there. We have been very lucky. And um you kind of cut out the metal man there. Right. Uh, so as long as you don't have professional flea market right. or swap meters there. Yeah. Right. And the thing about it is, is that there are bargains to be had. Sure. And a lot of times is having the knowledge of knowing what you're actually looking at. And that will come after a while, after you've, you've actually been working with it. If you're doing clothing reselling, it took you a while to figure out what you're going to buy to resell. What is selling? What is not selling? What styles are selling? What's even down to what sizes you should be looking for? Yes, absolutely. So, it, it's it's the same thing with with the uh, collectibles and antiques and that that kind of thing. Right. You'll you'll get to where you you, uh, you can recognize uh, a quality item by the way it's made, and um, just because it doesn't have a lot of age doesn't mean it doesn't have value. Now, uh, Michael grew up, like I said, his, his mother was an appraiser, an antique uh, salesperson. Mark, what, what's your background as far as how did you get involved with uh, collectibles and antiques? I've, I've always had a collection of some kind. Uh, it wasn't until, well, what, four years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that when Michael and I met and, you know, I'd never been to an auction. Okay. And uh, he's a madman at the, at an auction. <laughs> um, but um, I just started, well, I needed something to do besides take care of the property here. Well, and, um, and the thing about it, though, is Mark has a good eye. Right. He really does have a good eye. And he has, he has become more accustomed to it now because he's had to, because it's love me, love my dog. Right. Around here, you know? And uh, he has developed his own style as far as what he likes 
and what he looks for. And I think that's everyone should be able to do that. Everyone should pick something that they love, whether you want to collect uh, all of one type of item, all glass, all pottery, all china, all owls, or you want to mix. You want to be more eclectic and let all these things live together. But, you know, collect what you want, love what you collect, and the heck with everybody else. When, um, well, we kind of carried on a tradition that Michael and uh, his first husband that passed away did at major garage sales. We are known <laughs> for our garage sales. Uh, people will run into them on the street and they'll go, well, when's your next one? There you go. Um, and we carried that tradition on. Um, and it has just grown from there. We have, um, uh, it, well, I would say, let's see. 2019 yeah i think 2019 is when i opened my ebay account okay and i wasn't quite sure what i was doing but i was willing to try something and we you know it's it's been very well for us hey, you also said you sell on um Instagram as well, you said, or are you just posting? I know. We have, we have an Instagram account that okay basically confuses the heck out of me. But okay, because you right. you had mentioned it, I wasn't sure because you had mentioned. I think you said we uh, have we listed, have, you we, sell on we your have, YouTube channel, but I I have sold on uh, Facebook Marketplace. Okay, uh, not a whole lot. I mean, big items. I don't have any problem with doing it there because shipping something like you know right. So you just do local local pickup, right? Yeah. Uh, so Instagram, you're not really not really selling per se on Instagram. No. On Instagram account. No. Well, okay. you know what? And that's something that I'm not sure that that we'll ever really pursue, because we we've been very fortunate with the Facebook and with uh, the eBay the store. YouTube channel. Yeah. And i and and the YouTube channel. Yeah. But I'm telling you what, it's a full time dang job for him, and I appreciate so much everything that he's learned we we have been so fortunate this is a wonderful community i can tell you that right now if you got <clears throat> questions about anything how to set up your channel how to um sell on your channel there are people out there in that community that will be more than happy to help you out right there are people out there that when we're we're very new. We are very very new at this YouTube thing and the and the live sales. Yeah, that just that just started five months ago. And right. um, we've had some people that ask us to join them on their sales, which gave us a lot of experience. And now, some of those same people, we're having them join our sales. Right. Um, it's quite a collaborative grouping. And look at you, and boo. boo! Oh my God! That, and this is one of the. When I tell you that there are some of the kindest, most loving, and funnier than heck people out there, mm -hmm. Boo and her sister, right? They're a hoot, but they are. They're. They're. I have not met really anybody that's been horribly ugly. Uh, I guess they could personality wise. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm just, uh, I want to clear that. I know you were, you were talking about the looks. You were basically un nasty people. Basically. Right. And, and you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's the world yeah, we live well, in, you know, some people, you know, some very nice people, some okay people, some people that aren't so nice, but when we have our sales, it's so funny because we have really just a good a time visiting with some of these folks. And as we do selling, and the thing about it is, is that you may not make a sale and people need to realize this. If you're going to sell, it's not always about a hard sale. 
a lot of times it's about getting to where people are comfortable with you and you are comfortable with them. They may not be a buyer today, but next time they come on, maybe they will be. Right. Maybe they'll tell their friends. Maybe they'll go ahead and say, hey, you need to subscribe to this channel because these guys are just pretty much crazy. Right. But we have we have a good time. We really do have a good time. And as far as selling, um, did you want to talk about trends or do you want to talk? What do you want? What would you? Yeah. Like? Well, like I said, I want to get in a little bit into, you know, how, how you source. And uh, we, we talked about well, where you sell and uh, basically you're selling one off. Well, we pretty much got what we sell. We sell, right. uh, but you also sell. You're in in the linens as well. You sell. We we will sell. I appreciate anybody that can do something and make something. I bought a uh, anybody that watched my last sale. We had some linens, and it was the saddest story you ever wanted to hear in your entire life. This woman made the most beautiful hand crocheted work. Um, pillowcases and uh, cross stitch linens and won all kinds of awards at the state fair. They may sound, sound hokey to you, and it may sound hokey to me, but it didn't to her. And I'm telling you what, this woman was an absolute artist. When I went to this estate sale, there sets all of her awards and her ribbons shoved in a box, being put out for the trash. Because no one cared enough to preserve that. Yeah. And I looked over and I saw a couple of boxes of lemon, linens that had been wadded up and shoved underneath a table. I didn't ask how much they were. I didn't ask. I didn't even look through the box. I knew that the stuff that was in that box, this woman had made. I went up and I made an offer. I said, I want... Well, how much do you want? I said, how much do you want? And she says, well, I don't know, for that old crap. And I said, well, I <laughs> so I bought it all. And I ended up with like uh, 135 pieces. Mm -hmm. And when I got them home, oh, my God. That's the time that I looked down in those boxes and I said, you know what? Sometimes it's not the value of an individual item. But there's somebody out there that will appreciate this as much as I do. There's someone out there that that will remember grandma did this kind of work. There are not that many people out there that are doing that any longer. Right. I don't know anybody that's got the patience for it. I sure wouldn't. But we we brought some of those linens onto our one of our sales. And our viewers loved them. Because they remind you, I mean, I have some linens here. That I, I, I told you, gentlemen, that this is the home I grew up in and Long story short, I'm going to eventually move out, but that's another story. But anyway, I still have pretty much everything my mother had here, linens, glassware, all that is still here. And the thing about it is, yeah. is that it uh, brings back know, fond memories. With a lot of things that we that we deal with, I don't look at it as I own this and I'm going to sell it to somebody else. I look at it that I've acquired this and I'm going to help preserve it you're saving by, it from going to a landfill and with people all the time and effort to make it. Sending it to somebody else that's going to love it. Right. Exactly. And that's that's how we have all You're of these basically things. Basically regifting the love, so to speak. Right. Well, the thing about an antique. Something hasn't sat around for a hundred years intact unless somebody loved it. Right. Unless it had meaning for somebody. Not one single thing. Now it may not mean something to the grandchildren of this person, but the viewers that we have, it may have provoked a, uh, a feeling of nostalgia to them or something that they're thinking, you know what? I'm going to get that and hold on to it for my grandchild. Right. That's how we preserve and how we protect things that are now lost arts. None, none of this stuff can be re replicated the way it is. None of it. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's, especially with the linens, like I say, it's a dying art. Um, uh, everybody's out there using this 3D printer now. They're not sitting down 
and putting on their glasses and taking out a needle and thread and with each stitch make it so special right um and caring and the things that they were making uh, it's like they were making wedding gifts for their their family they were making baby sh- gifts for their grandchildren yeah, their exactly. great grandchildren and so you know it's up to us to preserve that and I, I am so fortunate that there are so many people out there that feel the same way I do. Right. I put you up on the screen. The, huh? I'm sorry. I said I put up on the screen that's a pro tip. And I bring that up from time to time. When you're outsourcing, whether it be a yard sale or a garage sale or an estate sale, always look like the nooks and crannies and underneath oh, yeah. the tables. That was a perfect, that's a perfect example of that. You probably oh. other people were there and then didn't even notice that you went in. You said, and then you again. I always try to build some kind of rapport with the sellers. Mm. You might have known the the, uh, the people that are running estate sale, but I always try to build. If I go to a garage sale, I always say, "Oh, it's great morning." Like like this past weekend, it wasn't super hot. It's been very hot around here. It says, "Oh, it's so nice. It's nice and cool this morning." And I just short chit chatting with the people. So you try to build a little rapport. So when you put a bundle together. But they said, oh, that guy was a nice guy. Let me let me give him a deal. But that that's the idea. Like I said, you look underneath the tables, look in the nooks and crannies. And there are stories where people actually went in the closet. I'm using a little tape off like a closet. <laughs> well, where all the resellers went and looked in a closet and got things out of a closet. I'm gonna say, give you, you a know, quick tip. For this? I'm gonna give you a quick tip right now. Mark and I went to an auction, and this was after they had had a four day estate sale. Right. And the auctioneer said, oh, why don't you come to my auction? It's all the crap. And that's exactly what he said. It's all the crap that's left over that didn't sell at the estate sale. Yeah. So we went to this estate sale and they're selling boxes that are underneath tables. And I'm thinking, well, who in the heck went through those? Nobody. And are they, there's somebody, hold on. Sure. Mark smile and look, look pretty. <laughs> no, I just, I, I like, I like, to- I say things in the show sometimes, and I, I think sometimes they kind of like slip through the cracks. So when something like one of my guests or something brings up things that I had mentioned before, I like to repeat them. It's like, remember, guys, you know. <laughs> and in a box, in a brown paper, like a lunch sack, they were getting ready to sell this stuff. And I looked down, and I saw just the corner of one of these, and I bought the whole box. And this is what was in it. Antique Valentines. Wow. And vintage Valentines. This woman had been a school teacher. And these were all Valentines from her students. And a lot of them are the the 3D okay. pop-up 3D, Valentines. Okay. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely beautiful. They're German and Bavarian. And they were in a box of what the even the auctioneer said, oh, they're just selling the crap that's left over. No, they're not. So when you go to an auction, you go to an estate sale, look, if you're in a garage, look overhead. If you have to get a little step stool, which I, yeah, I've been known. <laughs> I, I, look, I look everywhere. I look in the bottoms of closets. I look in shoe boxes. I look... Yeah. I look everywhere. You never and know. And it's funny. I have found stuff underneath the beds in some of these houses. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that nobody ever bothered with. Like everybody the looks under the bed, right? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that is a tip, and that and that's a Great good tip. tip. Yeah. Um, and when you go to a swapping shop or a swap meet, that kind of thing, where uh, people have brought items in and they're like set up in a parking lot, most every area is, will have some sort of a thing like that. Sure. <clears throat> always dig through the boxes. Don't Absolutely. look at the whatever's laying on top and say, oh, this is, I don't want that. Dig through the boxes. It, yeah, that's kind of, kind of like I know Kristen's in the chat and she uh, she goes to the Goodwill bins and a lot of times you dig to the bottom of that bins and you, you find some gold down there. Oh, yeah. 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 I, and I, I've, done, I've done that before too with jewelry. Right. I collect costume jewelry. But that was the other thing I was going to mention. Do you do so? Vintage costume jewelry. But every once in a while, down in the bottom of a a box of costume jewelry, you'll find one one piece of gold. 
right, works for absolutely. me. Okay, I'm just going to touch quickly on a couple things as far as the uh, you know selling vintage, and then I want to get into like have you do basically like a show and tell. Okay. Uh, Michael and Mark are kind enough to bring uh, some samples. They've got samples together, kind of show us when they talk about the various oh, types. Oh, good of lord! <laughs> anybody that knows us, anybody knows us knows that if somebody says I'm looking for, we'll go dig around in a box and probably find something for right. you. Okay, so just real quickly, I just want to mention a couple things. Um, are there any any books? I know, I know you said, I think you said you have what? How many books did you say you have on, on collectible? Uh, hundreds. Hundreds, hundreds. We have hundreds. Mark, well, what, what about like someone someone like like new new to this type of uh, reselling? What kind of book would you well, recommend? Go ahead and talk about. You know, uh, okay, this is my opinion. The, the, the books that I brought... No, actually, well, the ones that I, yeah, I have sitting in front of me anyway. The books are an excellent resource. And you can get them at thrift stores. You can get them at estate sales, even auctions. And people don't take the time. It, they've got their phone and they're looking everything up on their phone and taking that information where, okay, Fenton Glass, 1940 to 1970. Someone was paid to be specific about what is in this book. And yeah, books are invaluable as far as you're you're getting you're getting the information from the horse's mouth right right okay well, because too many people, to make a pile all on one one spot well yeah they, they take up room but if you could just for instance i yeah, have well, we got i have two fenton glass books here all right one is the, the first 25 years, the other one is the second 25 years. If I went to if I went to eBay or anywhere else to get these books now, this is probably fifty to seventy five dollars. Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, a lot of money. Yep. What well, we pay three bucks a piece for? Them. I think, I think I, we pay three dollars a piece for them okay. at an estate sale. You, you see Mike's uh, crazy card comment here. There's something that you'd probably be familiar with. I'm not familiar with. He says. Corellia, K O R E L A? Question mark. Corell's. Familiar with that? Oh, uh, Covell. Covell's price guides. Uh, price guide? Okay. Yeah, they're price guides. And uh, they are basically, I don't think people even, I'm not sure they even put out an actual hard cover. They may do some kind of pocket editions. Okay. Uh, it used to be Covell's was uh, kind of the Bible as far as antiques um they most of their stuff is online now and it's yeah, good like almost everything right it, it yeah it's good information but you know what i i'm one of those kind of people that i would prefer to have a something in my hand because i know the information that i get offline may be a good place to start however the people that are writing these books are not trying to sell you a product. They are not trying to sell you a vase. They're not trying to sell you um, a toy. They are not trying to sell you vintage clothing and costume jewelry. What they are selling is information. Right. And they are selling that information to you because they've done the, the legwork. And the books that you hold in your hand is a culmination of their hard efforts working through manufacturers and getting information working through going and interviewing old employees um it's simply information that is not uh really that good on the internet you can see the same piece of glass with three different people saying this is murano this is czechoslovakian this is uh, what are you going to go by? Right. But this 
if you want to buy that information, there it is. You've got it in your hand. It's all yeah, all in one place. Yep. And we our books. I have books on every subject known to man. I buy. <laughs> I, I've got books on stamps, which I don't collect. Yeah. I've got books on toys that I really don't collect. But you never know if you run into them at an uh, auction. Or, there you, you know. go. Then I always know where to go where right. I can research it. It used to be you could go to the library. Not anymore. Yeah, not, not anymore, the, right? The, yeah. li the library doesn't. Much care. everything's virtual anymore. anymore yeah. I do, okay, I'm gonna. Go ahead. I'm still sticking with books. Oops. I have been looking for go. a book, a particular book for e Okay, the guys are guys are glitching a little bit, guys. I don't know if they're, they're glitching on your You're frozen, guys. All right. You can hear me once you once you back out and come back in, uh, Mark and Michael. You're frozen. That happens sometimes, unfortunately. Are they frozen on your side, guys? I believe they should be, right? Guys, can you hear me okay? But yeah, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna pop back in. Okay, they'll pop back in. Unfortunately, that's uh, they're hardwired too. So I don't I don't I don't understand it. I was uh, I was in another chat earlier today, and I was, we we're talking about uh, you know Wi-Fi and internet and cable. And I said I pay over a hundred dollars a month just for internet. So I don't, I don't I don't have like cable TV, but they're back. Hey, there you go. Now we got you. We, we <laughs> didn't think we'd go on any place. But... Okay. But anyway, okay, so, he's talking about his book. You were so, talking about your books. Okay, this is the long genealogy. They uh, uh, that they the last time that this book book was printed was 1981, first and last print. So, like I said, I've been looking for this book for years. Michael found it for me as our anniversary gift. Happy anniversary! And. It was a hundred and fifty bucks. A hundred and fifty bucks. Wow. So, but he's got information now that not many people are going to have because that, that book true. was printed once. And my my advice too on books, while well, we're talking about books, real quick, um, my advice on books is never go by the prices that are in these books because they, they will have pictures, descriptions time frames and usually we'll have some kind of a price guide ignore that that's not going to do you any good not today it's only as worth as much as what somebody's willing to pay for it sure but as far as <clears throat> researching when you see books that were printed in the 1950s and the 1940s grab those books right you're gonna get a penny because, of a dollar if you find them at yard sale well, or, yeah. you know what i've paid up for some of mine okay and that's because those books are no longer in print they will never be reprinted and the um information is closer to the source the actual time source than we are now if you've got a book that's 50 years old they were 50 years closer to when that item was made gotcha. than we are and so that information is more uh, reputable. So okay, but but if you see books, buy them. Yes, yeah, pick and them up. They, ta they take up room, but yeah, you know. And, and the thing is, is that we we will buy duplicates if we're someplace and we see a, a duplicate of ones that we've got. If we get it cheap enough, we're going to buy it because we always know somebody that can use it. Absolutely. So or, or you can, list, you can list it for resale. Like I said, they're valuable because they're not, sure. not reprinting them. Yeah. Wow. Well, this is how we list it for resale. You need this book? Okay. I'll okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, as I like to say, uh, I, I eat meat and potatoes. <laughs> so I like to say, let's let's get into the meat and potatoes now. Okay. Filled up. I just want to get the, you know, the background a little bit. 
So uh, whatever order you want to go, uh, Mark and Michael, as, as far as the various uh, collectibles that you have what there. We're, just what, what, we're see, what we're seeing sell and what we are selling. Right. So just okay. bring it up and tell us what it is, and uh, we'll discuss a little bit about it. All right. Give me that. Give me that. What's, 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 our, what's our first uh, sample? The first thing we're going to look at are 1950s and 60s ceramics. Okay. They're very, very popular. And we'll the, more the, bizarre, the more bizarre, the better. Wow. Okay. That's bizarre. <laughs> this, is, this is a pineapple planter with a dog coming out of its head. It was Japanese made. But there, there were very few of them made because they were bizarre. And any of these um, anthropomorphic or whatever they say that anthropomorphic fruit, flowers with human characteristics are very popular right now. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. Okay, great tip. Hello. All right. And here, uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. And again, along the lines of the 1950s and 60s, head bases. These are ceramic head bases made in Japan. This is an unusual two-part. She's called the Umbrella Girl. Okay. Head bases went through a, um, a period about... 30 years ago, 35 years ago, and they were very popular and got to be very pricey. Yeah. And then so like back back in like the 90s, they were very popular. And okay, but then again, the market wouldn't sustain them long enough. And all of the these head bases were bought up and put into collections. And now some of these collections are starting to break up and people are starting to let go of them because they're retiring. They're moving to smaller homes. 1950s and 1960s ceramic head bases. It looks kind of like Marilyn Monroe a little bit. Well, she looks like she's got a story. Yeah. Very popular right now. That is, that is a bolo. Be on the lookout for those. Now, be careful. Because you want to make sure, especially ceramics of, of the 50s and the 60s and the 40s, um, you want it to have little to no damage. No, no damage is best. Um, on certain ceramics, it's not going to make a difference. It's just crazy. Uh, that is uh, surface cracking. It's not a crack in the, the material, but a crack in the glaze. And that's to be expected in in that type of ceramics. Okay. So don't let that dissuade you. But uh, a big hunk out of a piece of glass, mm -mm. Uh, carnival glass especially, if it's not perfect, it's a hard, hard sell. Now uh, with with that those ceramics, how, how do you kind of date it? How do you how would you know it's well, like from the fifties? It, it's going to all depend. Well, some of them come dated. Okay. Some of them you can date by. So it'll have like the little at symbol and then the year. This one, as a matter of fact. This one is 1959. And it's dated 1959. Oh, how about that? Okay. You can also, if there's a manufacturer's sticker, you can also. Uh, yeah, Mike, that, 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 Mike research, said there's a lot of reproduction. That that, company, that's a question. That, yeah. If you research that company, It'll tell you what years of operation it was produced. And that will give you an idea. Um, a lot of it is going to be colors that they used. And you'll, oh, do you have a, yeah. What are you looking for? Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, you'll see different colors. Uh, in the 1950s, there was an awful lot of uh, teals and yellows. Okay and brighter reds on items when you moved into the 60s you went you went into the same colors that you saw in your homes as far as your furniture <laughs> and the same colors the tiles that women was using on their clothes you're looking at avocado green you're looking yep. at uh 
gold, mustard colored. You're looking at dirty blues. Okay. You're looking at uh, darker teal colors. As you're moving into the 60s and the 70s, you're going to see those colors. And then you'll go through a um, a section where everything was brown. You know, the furniture was brown. Right. The curtains are brown. Okay. And then we went through a, an era where everything was jewel-toned, where you've got navies, you've got burgundies, you've got hunter greens. Whatever, whatever that woman or that man was wearing on their back, you're going to find in their glassware, their tableware, their dishes. Okay. That's how we choose to live our lives. What we put on our back is what we want to put in our homes. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Hey, what's, right. what's, what's our next uh, type of okay. collectible we're going to show? I, we had this discussion the other night. Fairy lamp. Fairy glasses, yes. Fairy lamps. I'm Fairy gonna, lamp. I brought I'm two. We, we brought a couple of them. Okay. This so for is those of you, I, I didn't know originally what they were, and I, I'm learning about them. I mean, basically, they're, they're two pieces typically, right? They have to be? Two pieces. Some of them are three pieces. Some are three pieces? Okay. I brought a two piece, and I brought a three piece to show okay. you that are both Fenton. This is the, this is Rosaline. So basically and a tea light would go in there. Yes. Yes. And not, and this was made, this was a limited production uh, for Fenton. And this was made in 1976. And the thing about it is, is that why these, these are really collectible right now is because when they produced these, these were not very popular. This was this color that Fenton came out with, this Rosaline, back then didn't sell well. So they limited the production of those. So therefore, now, that's what people want. Right. Now this okay. piece, this piece is a Persian medallion, three-piece fairy lamp. That's three pieces, okay. Okay. There's the top. And then there is a clear glass section that fits inside of that base. Okay. And the tea light would sit on top of that. Okay. And this particular line, this is a, uh, a pink satin glass, aeritized satin glass. And this was done for Fenton's 75th anniversary of being in the glass business. Okay. And um, so those are desirable pieces. If you're looking at Fenton, if you see any of the ones that are, that they'll say 75th on them. Little 75 with oh, that will sell, say 75 for every okay. mark with that 75th. Okay. Those are uh, they more valuable? They are choice because they were only made one year, like a limited edition type and of thing. That's a limited thing. Okay, and uh, Persian medallion happens oh, to be one of, one of uh, Fenton's most popular patterns, and that pink stretch iridized was absolutely stunning and that was frank fenton picked that out specifically that that's what he wanted produced as right. part of the line for that 75th anniversary okay so if you see that grab them um some uh now just there, quick, there quickly, are, now, go ahead i would go just ahead. say quickly the fairy glass is that something we would typically run in into at yard sales and garage sales well, yeah, sometimes fairy, fairy lamps. I'm keeps I'm fairy, saying fairy, fairy lamps. lamps. Not not as much anymore. Not as much anymore. Become very popular. Um, okay. but you still will. We bought one. Actually, we got a really good deal on one, at an antique shop. Yes. And I was like in shock when I looked down and said, "Well, wait a minute, they want four dollars for that," and it was a hand painted Benton fairy lamp. I keep saying keep saying fairy glasses, fairy lamps. Fairy lamp. <laughs> fairy lamp. <laughs> I'm thinking about glass. We're talking about glasses in my brain. <laughs> but but you know what? There, like I keep saying, um, there's going to be a, a collector for everything. Carnival glass uh, right now is making a big comeback. Right. And we're, we're looking again at the same kind of a, a time period from 
1907 when it was first introduced by Fenton. Uh, they copied actually Louis Comfort Tiffany uh, did an exposition in France at the Paris Exposition and he brought his Fabriel glass which was the first iridized glassware and it was so popular that a lot of European manufacturers started copying it after they stole the formulas of course okay. but uh, Tiffany was one that had the actually had the patent on them but um, so many glass houses people moved artisans worked moved from glass house to glass house to glass house right and they took they took the knowledge with them and that's right. how that's how we get what we what we have now but Fenton right. was the one that originated the carnival glass in the United States in about 1907 and, and this, this is carnival glass this this is carnival glass and this is uh Iron, Iron Nurses. um Northwood. You know what? What makes it the carnival glass? The type of coloring, the type of material. The iridescence. The iridescence. Yes, and the thing about it is, is when Fenton introduced this, they were John. trying. They were trying to rival Tiffany. Right. Um, they were looking to sell their glasswares in high-end facilities, but it never happened. It, it, it just didn't work out for them. So, Fenton, I tell you what, those those Fenton boys were sharp. Um, they started marketing their carnival glass. First, they started out in high end specialty stores, like we would call them Macy's and those sure. those kind of stores. But it didn't go over because people that had money back then, they went in and bought the Tiffany. So they had a formula that they were using. They had glassware that they were using. They had molds that they had already produced. And they decided, well, how are we going to be able to market this? It was a marketing tool for them. They started taking them and they sold them to carnivals as prizes. Okay, so throw, therefore the name throw, Carnival Glass. Carnival Glass. Throw, throw a ball, knock down some pens, get a piece of glass. Throw okay. some pennies into a and it sticks on the glass, you get a piece of glass. Hit a, take a mallet, hit a bell and make it ring, you get a piece of glass. Well, didn't, and they, it, didn't they also put it in like deep detergent and? No, not okay. Glass. okay. But that was their marketing strategy. And you know what? It worked because they were able to move their products then into lower end markets. That would be Woolworths, Kresge's, okay. those types of sh stores. The five and dime type of stores, yeah. But you know, you, they were banking on the fact that you won a prize at the fair and you had, you, you had people looking at all this beautiful shiny glass. Even if you didn't take a piece home, if you didn't win one, you went to Walmart, uh, Walmart they, you went to Woolworths, Woolworths yeah. Yeah. and there sits a whole display of it. And it's like, oh, it's beautiful. And that's how they started marketing and making some big money. What? Okay. The question oh. from uh, Mike Crazy Card. Okay, we're going we're gonna to talk about base colors in just a second. We'll pull okay. them up. Very good. I, I, brought, I, brought, I brought some examples to show you. Great. But, um, and then on the coattails of Fenton, that's when all the other manufacturers are saying, hey, look. These guys are making money. So that's when Imperial started, Westmoreland started, Northwood. Northwood had old molds. They just started putting iridescence on it. Uh, Millersburg. Uh, everybody started making carnival glass, and it had a great run until about 1922. Okay. Anyway, let's move on then. Okay. Colors. She wanted to hear about colors. Mike wanted to hear about the, the base colors, right? Yeah. You, you can't. I have no filter. I have no shut up. And I'm so sorry, <laughs> but I am old. I brought you have to break, <laughs> have I to break the cowboy Bob pretty soon. Oh, <laughs> well, wait a minute. Who who asked about cowboy Bob? Anyway, I <laughs> anyway, I brought three examples, and I want to show you that they are basically they're basically the same thing. Um, very very similar. They're all Fenton. 
This is a Fenton basket weave lace edge bowl, double lace edge bowl. The base color is teal. It's a teal okay. blue. Teal blue, yes. And it is a very, it's a very unusual color. That's an unusual for the base teal? Yes. Here's a marigold piece. Marigold, the base oh, color, gorgeous. is clear. Wow. Okay, clear base, okay. You always, and there's a tip. Hey, I got a tip. You always judge the color of carnival glass by the base glass, not the color of the iridescence. Okay, how about that? Okay. And here is a piece, and this is the rarest color that I've got of this here, is red. So that's the rarest base is red. That we have. That, that well, have. that I have here tonight down right. here. But I have this in green. I have it in cobalt. I have it in um, a couple of pastel colors. But red is harder to find because it costs more to make because they had to use okay. uh, gold in it to make the, the glass. Gotcha. But uh, what I wanted, I, don't put those away yet. We're still looking. What I want people to understand is they, they always say, well, what is you don't want that marigold stuff because it's crappy. It's, it's, it's out there and there's a whole bunch of it. People do not necessarily buy because of what they think is the most expensive, but what they think is most attractive, what goes with their lifestyle. And I'm telling you, the teal blue, it's nice. But is it any prettier than the air gold? No, I don't think so. Is it any, is the marigold any less attractive than the red? No, it's not. Today's collectors are not necessarily collecting for rarities, but what they like, what goes with right. what they have in their homes. Keep that in mind. And that is, right. so when you're out sourcing and you see carnival glass, don't discount it because it's a piece of marigold just don't um now randy saying to to make the red it took gold yes it does it took gold I, that's, I, that's guys i tell you i'll interrupt you for one second i tell you every one of my shows randy knows just about everything <laughs> so randy brings that the, the factoid right into the chat to make red and make gold yeah thank you randy no that's why the, that's why there's so little of the red uh, right it, it a costs, more expensive it to make right to make. Yeah, sure. That and they had a problem with the firing of red. Okay. But, okay. What else you want to okay, look at? What, what do we got next? I'm sure we've got something okay. right there. Here, in... Swung bases. Swung. S W U N G. Swung bases. S W N G vases. Swung vases. These are very mid century modern. This is a Viking piece, and that's also a Viking piece. These were made by Viking Glass Company. And right now, they are super hot. If you're out sourcing and you see a swung base, and what, what makes it a swung base is normally it's, it's always going to be a molded glass piece. And when it was taken from the mold while it was still hot, it was turned upside down. And it was swinging around, which would give you the Therefore, they swung. It was swung around. And they swung it around. That's why they okay. call it a swung base. And that's what gives it the unusual tops. Gotcha. Okay. And the, same with that one, the blue. But you'll find them. This is a smaller one. We've even got some that are even smaller than that. Right. But we've got huge ones. Uh, but people are collecting by color. They're collecting. It's because... They are absolutely beautiful in a windowsill. Now, this is a Fenton piece. Yeah, see, I wouldn't know that was swung because to me that looks a little bit different. Yeah, it's swung. Okay. And that's that's a Fenton piece from um, probably the late night. Let me see the bottom of that. Late 1950s, because they came out with a line in the 50s that was real. They were real hot on that colonial look, so everybody was buying a lot of milk glass, and Hobnail was very popular. And this was one of the most popular lines for Fenton. Right, Carol Bargain Shopping had a question for you. 
What? The larger swung vase is selling they, better the than the larger the ones. Do sell? Uh, oh. Well, yeah, but the thing, the thing about it is, is that they sell well, but they don't travel well. A right. lot of people end up with a lot of damage, especially those that are anything that's over 30 inches, 35 inches tall. That, that's getting to be a big, big piece of glass. Right. Um, I want to, before I forget to mention, I don't, I don't think I put it in our notes. I did want to discuss a little bit about shipping towards the end. So oh, okay. I'm going to touch on that. But um, no, it, it doesn't necessarily, bigger is not necessarily better. Right. A lot of times it, uh, with a collector, it, it just all depends where you have the space that's going to fit. Okay. And believe me, I would love to have the uh, maybe a, a few more of the larger ones because I've right. got quite the collection. I just brought down a few examples. Okay. All right. I'm not crazy. Well, okay. There you go. No, it's the other mic. <laughs> it's Mike the crazy card. That's right. Not, not you. <laughs> and, and right now, Van, Van Briggle is very popular. What, what's it called? That's a Van Briggle pottery. Okay. They're out of Colorado. Out of okay. Colorado Springs. And right now, and, and they used a lot of the same matte glazing. And the thing about it is, is that this fits in so well with so many different kinds of um, home styles. And it's a very, they're very serene colors and there's not kind a like soothing, of, soothing color. Yeah. Or, it's not, yeah. it's not a big punch in the gut. Right. And it goes, and it goes well with just about everything. If you see Van Briggle, Van Briggle will be clearly marked. Uh, you getting that at all? And it will say Van Briggle on it. Okay. Uh, Mark, do you have your chat open? Can you type in the name of that? Do you yep. have it open? Okay. Van Briggle. V-A-N-B-R-I-G-G-L-E. That, that is very popular. All right now, uh, we're having very good luck, and I'm seeing an awful lot of sales on um, pottery. That is uh, studio pottery, which means a potter just made it. Uh, it. It's not from a particular company. There you go, Carol. And um, a lot of the unusual drip glazes are very popular um, because they're going with a lot of mid-century homes. Uh, they're going for shape. They're going for uh, unusual glazes, unusual colors. And then there is Murano. Let's move on to just talk about Murano for just a minute. Murano glass is a, a Murano is an area. It's actually an island. Italy, Murano, and known for its glassware. Right now, Murano glass is a particularly good buy. There's an awful lot of it now on the market. So if you're purchasing it, be careful what you're paying um, because if they've reached or beginning to reach a cap in resale pricing, um, I don't want you losing out any money. Right. And what would but you call it, that? That the style of that? I mean, that, that iridescent. What would they call that? Kind of like a sparkly kind of. Well, this is uh, this is adventuring. Okay. And that's it. Will you'll see it with gold flakes? Kind of like flashing, flakes. like gold flakes. Yeah. Yes. Gold flakes, copper. Uh, flakes and silver flakes. Unusual color combinations. Okay. But that's and, not that's not typical old Murano glass, or it is isn't typical? Well, this is just an example of Murano glass. Okay. Now, there's going to be... Uh, do we even have a little piece? No. Oh, okay. Well, I only brought one down. One okay. Murano also comes in every shape, color, form... Um, there's an awful lot of, there's a couple of really good Murano clubs, you know, on online Okay. that you, you can try look around 
and see if there's one that suits you. Um, when you get in, involved in a collector's club, you just got to find one that that you're comfortable in. Okay. And that's just like anybody, anything else. Right. Um, but find find one that is. No, it's B R I G G L E. You got an N in there, an N in there. Um, there are some books on Murano. I've got one. I'm not real happy with it. So I've okay. been working in some additional background just for my own personal knowledge. Um, is this uh, correct? Yes. Thank you're you. in the in the Midwest, and I, I I don't know if that would vary as far as I guess you're maybe going to find more things that are produced in that area. Typically, I would. Uh, no, no, not really, because uh, being in the the middle of the country, the only thing we've got going for us is that um, we're in the center of the country, and all roads lead somewhere. Right. And um, a landing place sometimes is in the Midwest, in St. Louis. Chicago, Kansas City. Uh, we were we're all very fortunate. The further west you go, you're going to get more of a uh, the southwestern Indian, right, right, American Indian, sure, American, Native American, Native stuff. American, right, yep. Uh, and that kind of stuff, yeah. Uh, okay. We are very fortunate. We have a a wonderful art conservatory here in Kansas City that has been producing beautiful things from their students for decades and i've been very fortunate to find some very reasonably priced so okay. art glass gotcha i love art glass okay. anybody that knows me anybody that's ever seen me on one of these shows on any of our shows that is my love and i got that from my mother my mother like I say she was a, a dealer and an appraiser and right I grew up to do the same thing, but I love me some art glass. Okay. Do we have anything else types of things we're going to show or? Mm, what else have we got? You got anything else art glass back there? Well, we got that down there. But um, this is Lotz. It's Bohemian. Okay. 1910 to about 1920. Iridized, crackle gray, crackle finish. This how, is do you, how do you how do you spell that? Which Lotz L O E T Z L O E T Z. There was a number of manufacturers. There was Lotz, um, and the thing about okay, a lot of these companies worked interchangeably. They had art glass artists moving from company to company to company. And some of these glass houses would turn around and job lot out to another glass house. Okay. Um, Lotz used a company called Kralik a lot. And Kralik was an art glass studio also. And a lot of their wares were sold under the Lotz name. Well, they they had subbed then, it out to how they manufactured. Yeah, and then there's another uh, company that made very similar wear, and it was called Lutz. Okay. L U T Z. So okay. it gets very confusing when it comes right. to. Right. Yeah, I could see how it would. art glass. But uh, if you're out and about and you see something and you think, golly, that sure is kind of neat. And as much as I hate to say this, go ahead and try that Google Lens. Right. And see if it gives you some kind of a indication on what it could be. Um, it may be wrong, but it may give you an idea. Um, and not only not all art glass was made in Europe. We have an awful lot made in the United States. Okay. Um I've got a piece that I absolutely love. And we and purchased this from one of we we purchased this from another reseller. Another reseller online. Okay. 
And this is a Stevens and Williams piece. Um, and this was made in the 1880s, early 1890s. Wow, 1880s. Wow. And a sweetheart pulled it up on one of her sales. Did she ask me about it first? No. Oh. Well, she should have. But <laughs> she pulled it up on one of her sales, and I decided I, I got to have that. You got to have it. <laughs> well, nobody was bidding on it. But me. And I, I wanted it. But um, you see, some of this stuff was kind of gaudy. Right. Kind of. Kind Even of back in the 1880s. Okay. Yeah. But there's not a whole lot of them out there anymore. And that that's my, that's my collection. A lot, that's a lot of collection. anything from the 1880s still around. <laughs> but you got to stop and think, you know. Uh, when I when, when my mother was in business, and I was just coming along, that was an antique. True. That yeah. was vintage. It was vintage, right? We're going to talk a little bit. Just uh, we, I don't want to use up all your time. But, no, right, like one, I want you to discuss wherever you want to discuss. Okay. People can hopefully things people can I, hang in if things, they can't hang that in. I want you can to always... start looking for guys. If you're out there going to be doing reselling, so cottage core, balls, right? Cottage yeah, core is beginning to be a big thing. Cottage core. Right. Cottage core is an amalgamation of kind of a shabby chic that we're not supposed to use that term anymore since they've copyrighted it. I guess. Right. Um, <laughs> Farmhouse, Hobbit House, a little bit of everything. But it's like going to the English countryside and walking down the lane and walking into a, a vine-covered cottage and having tea with your aunt. That's basically what cottage core looks like. Um, a lot of handmade uh, macrame plant holders, a lot of plants and... Um, Believe it or not, the antique china pieces. Oh, okay. A lot of florals, very dainty florals. Um, people. Well, why? Why would that be considered cottage core? Because that's you know you go you think about you're going out and you're going to a cottage and it's a vine covered cottage. You're going to have tea and you're going to sit down and you're going to have a beautiful lace tablecloth okay and sitting on that tablecloth is going to be a beautiful piece like this or sitting on that tablecloth wasn't that pretty pink jade that was that was beautiful absolutely beautiful yep and the thing about it is is for for many years people said oh that's just a floral plate those floral plates are now antique right the ones that, that i collect and I've got an entire wall covered in them. And, Look, and 500 totes. Don't, don't even, <laughs> you know what? This is like, this is my life. It's, I it's, I you're passionate you about it. Like, like Randy, I posted earlier, Randy says your passion shows through when you discuss this. I you know you're very passionate about it. I have always loved well-made porcelain and well-made china. But I am now noticing that it's beginning to sell again. That people are going through and they're rehabbing older homes from the turn of the century. Right. And what are you going to put in that? Something from Ikea? No. <laughs> but these people are becoming more purists. They, they're going back to, they want the old hardwood floors. They want right. all the moldings. They want their dinner. They want their big dinner set. You know, they want... And I think it's wonderful. So that's something to look for is hand painted, not all necessarily hand painted, hand decorated. A lot of floral plates are and bowls and serving pieces. Those are items that in the next couple of years you're going to make some money off of. I can guarantee you that. The other thing that is popular right now is uranium, uranium glass. glass. If it glows, it goes. And that's a black light, so it glows. Yep. Yes. 
And this is a Depression era. Uh, it's Jeanette Glass Company. And it's the floral pat platter pattern. A lot of people call it poinsettia. But this just happens to be, it came in several different sizes. This is the, the rarest size it comes in. It's the tankard. Is it typically green? Uranium glass? Yeah. yeah. If yeah, it's yeah, yellow, yeah. if it's yellow, yellow too? It's, okay. it's Vaseline. I remember seeing see a lot of the green, yeah. Yeah. It's very popular. Um, we bought a, a by accident. And you know what? About half the stuff I buy is by accident. And this is a re stop that. This is a reason why when you go to an estate sale, don't discount that third day or that last day of the sale. Because things that they had horribly overpriced, when you get down to that last day of the sale, right, it's got to go because they've sold grandma's house. Yep. So you're either going to go to a thrift store to be donated or they're going to end up throwing it in a dumpster. That is the time for you to go out and make an offer. Make them an offer, right. And that's that's so like the whole thing. I guess, like you just said, I, I guess you're probably going to read to donate this or throw it out. I, I, you know, I, I like to kind of save it and save it from the landfills and, and get it. In, oh, I'm not sure that or... I'm not sure that's quite the strategy I'd use. Okay. I, I, I'd use this. This is what I'd say. Damn, you sure got a lot of this stuff left over. How much you want for the whole shoot? So you, you wouldn't get it into the, like you're going to. Well, because it. most of the pieces that we were looking at originally somebody's cousin who happened to be an expert in nothing came <laughs> in and looked up online someplace and they said, Oh, this stuff's worth a fortune. It's worth a lot of money. Right. And they had plates like a small salad plates and they had them for $20 a piece. Wow. Okay. Well, come last day of the sale. Guess what? They're all still sitting there. Even when they had marked them down 25%, when they had marked them down 50%, 50% was still sitting there. Yep. And then still ten dollars a plate. Yeah, we bought what a hundred and about one hundred and sixty pieces for fifty bucks. Wow. Okay. Of uranium glass. Of uranium glass. Oof. God bless. And he you. had to carry it upstairs. <laughs> I found another piece of Murano for you. Oh, here's another piece of Murano. These are very popular. Murano paperweights. Okay. Murano um, used to be, this is Nella no, yeah. Fleury. But the thing about it is, Murano had pretty much closed up market on, you could tell a piece of Murano glass a mile away because they went to the trouble of polishing the bottoms so beautifully. Okay. Well, look for things to look for. Okay. Well, yeah, it, it, they're well made pieces of glass. Sure. They are now making pieces in uh, Bohemian. They're calling it Bohemian. Right. Mostly it's Polish. Uh, Polish glass and some Japanese and some that's made in Mexico where they're going that extra step and polishing the bottoms to try to make it look like Murano glass. So you you had also it. told me that uh, the baby boomer is kind of coming back. What what kind of things of baby boomers will we be looking for? Well, now well, you, we stop, are, you stop now, wait a minute. think about it. We're, I'm a baby boomer. Right. So am I. Right. Well, okay. Anything. I'm sorry. Go I'm ahead. Gonna, no, I'm, no. You go ahead. Anything that brings back fond memories of our grandmother's Mm -hmm. or our mother's collection. And at our age, it's even the stuff that we played with when we were kids. That's what the baby boomers are looking at. Patrick had a question about the uranium glass. This is basically uranium in it, right? That's what makes it glow? No, I don't think there are fragments from my anus. Oh, your anus. Your anus. <laughs> but basically, it's, it's uranium you, in it that makes it glow. Correct. What? Basically, it has uranium in it. That's what makes it glow. Yes. Okay. Yes. But it's such a low level, it's not going to hurt you. Right. It's not. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people get it confused 
the and we I've said this before, uh, or tried to explain it before. Uranium glass is going to be green. Right. Vaseline glass is going to be a yellow. Right. And it will glow. Yep. But if but you technically can... it's not uranium glass it's because it's Vaseline glass is yellow. Right. Okay. And there's there's other types of glass. Uh, they have they've added um, different minerals in order to enhance glass or to give it a certain sheen or to okay. give it a certain luster, like custard glass. Custard glass, it, it glows also. Go ahead. He's what you got in there? Nope. Okay. Jewelry. We'll do yes. real, real. You got real, time for just real, real quick, quick jewelry? on jewelry? Yeah. Then we want to discuss a couple more things about um. You, you're right. how you ship things and uh, oh, okay. a couple other things. Go ahead. Right now, um, the big thing is, is people are starting to look into 50s and 60s and 40s jewelry. Okay. I'll grab that, grab that other case. No. Okay. You get this case. This is made by a company in California, and it's called Renoir was the name of the company right and it's all copper people that are doing a lot of boho that like wearing boho fashion sure. copper is a big seller okay so be on the lookout for copper jewelry because it's it's selling very well be on the lookout for jewelry with large chunky stones Large chunky stones, okay. This that is, is large like, and chunky. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But it's those yeah. are very popular. And that's Thank actually you. very popular with uh, people that do the boho. Okay. Marked pieces. Marked pieces. A lot of people think that you have to have a marked piece for it to be a nice piece of jewelry. That's not true. Right. There's a lot of beautifully made costume jewelry that was not marked now this piece is marked this is a 1960s christmas Beautiful. tree right made by hattie carnegie okay and i also have the matching earrings to go with it well wow. okay marked hattie carnegie pieces marked kramer uh marked weiss they're all popular. Okay. But the new collection is going to be this. Be on the lookout because you can still get it really cheap. 1960s and 70s, Sarah Coventry jewelry and Avon jewelry. But Mo Monet is not really worth typically. Oh, no, no. With. Monet's fine. Okay. Monet and Lesnar, they're, they're all okay. good. Emmons, okay. they're all good. Uh, but these are the ones I'm the ones I've mentioned. The Avon, a Trafari is wonderful. Trafari's Avon, all, yeah, that, I know that's yeah. And Sarah Coventry. Sarah Coventry. Uh, okay. Great. John Rivers. Joan Rivers. John Rivers, Rivers yeah. We we I'm not making any John Rivers them. anymore. Yep. We we just bought a, we bought a piece by Wham. And what we I, I bought it for four dollars. And I'm not saying this because I shouldn't say this. But I I paid four dollars for it at uh, Swap and Shop. A woman had a whole box full of stuff. Okay. I pulled this out. We sold it yesterday for forty nine ninety nine. Beautiful. So that is that's the stuff you need to be looking for. And I'm telling you, you can still go to a garage sale, an estate sale, any kind of sale that you're seeing, and you will see Avon jewelry. Avon yeah. didn't make that jewelry. Avon contracted yep. mm -hmm. others to make their jewelry. Yeah, they made the fragrances and they subcontracted out the other stuff, right? Well, and you know what I say about Avon. After 10 minutes, if they make any difference, it's all going to smell the same. But <laughs> um, as far as their jewelry, look at it. And you will see there's some dang good quality right. in the Avon pieces. Yep. And Sarah Coventry, Sarah Coventry never was cheap. No. You know, it's, the Sarah Coventry woman came to your house and you had a party and you had you know, party nice stuff tea and a, right. some cupcakes. 
yeah. you end up spending half your husband's salary <laughs> in one evening back in the 50s and the 60s. So anyway, Sarah Coventry, you got to stop and think about it. That's hitting its 50-year mark. Avon, a lot of their stuff is hitting their 50-year mark. Right. Those are items that you can still afford to buy. Okay. And those are items that once you put them on your, if you have a YouTube or if you've got eBay store or whatever. The very collectible and resellable. Yeah. That is something, if you buy, uh, this is where I look at it. If you buy something for $2 and you can sell it for $4, you've doubled your money, haven't you? If you can buy something for $5, and some of these pieces you can still get for, you can buy them for $5. And you turn around and you sell that for $15 or $20, you're making some good profit. Right. But those are those are items that you need to be looking for. Avon and Sarah Coventry. Okay. And old perfume bottles. Old perfume bottles. Oh, Lord. This one, I've got one here. And this is Caron, made in France. And you wouldn't think too much about it. I do have the original sleeve that it came in. Okay. With the lid. This was from the 1920s. Wow. But this bottle was made by Baccarat. How about that? So this is an art glass. It's an art glass perfume bottle. Sure. Don't discount old perfume bottles. There's money in everything. And there's value in everything. Right. I've got, here's an old, what was this one? Oh, Elizabeth Arden. Okay. This is part of her original packaging. Probably 1920. Right. Mark's going to talk to you about shipping. Mark's yes, I want to discuss shipping. shipping briefly about, you know, shipping fragile goods. I, anybody that has ever received anything from me I have sold over 600 items on eBay, and I've had three items break. Wow. That's that wasn't our fault. Right. Well, sometimes the post, postal carriers, well, you're a postal carrier. I better be careful. <laughs> sometimes they, they, they kind of it, throw it, things. He all hears them all the time. And, and, and I want you to know, it's not the carrier. Right. That piece, that piece that you mail, that box that you mail, before it gets to me to deliver, it goes through the conveyor belts and the, it yeah. may have gone through sixty or seventy different operations right. before it ever gets to me. So, and I try to be very careful because I love everybody. Right. The way, so actually, I get the the if Michael doesn't take my packages when he goes to work, I go to the post office, and the girls right. know me. And they always enjoy, they, well, they can tell by the way it's packaged. It, I package it as if an 800 pound gorilla is going to handle it. I wrap it in bubble wrap and then I, paper, 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 paper. So I you make sure there's bubble wrap around the, the piece and then there's there's paper cushioning it around the box now well every and part, nook or cranny and you get as much paper as you need so that it doesn't move well there's no movement in those boxes when i take them to work in the morning i could kick it across the parking you can lot shake it you don't hear anything moving no no, no. rattling but, there, we're, but for a, a reseller you all need to realize that if you get into this reselling thing you're going to spend a lot of money on packaging. Sure. Um, Close to doing business. But yeah. you don't want, you can get free boxes through the postal service, but it all depends on what kind, if you're going to be mailing priority, you can get some free boxes. But if you're not, then you're kind of SOL. But you do not want, you do not want a flimsy box. You don't want one that's been used four or five times. You cannot, and I will repeat this as a reseller, you cannot use a box with an advertisement on it, like Dawn dishwater dish liquid or anything that says 
batteries or anything that says anything with liquid in it. You or can, food. Or food. Any type of food. You, you, you can't reuse those kind of boxes unless you take tape, like duct tape, and tape all the way around that box to where you can't see that anymore. Because the post office will not take it. They well, may you can it. recycle like Amazon boxes and Walmart boxes and eBay boxes. and Yes. Those yeah. you, you most certainly can. But be careful because uh, boxes will lose their integrity. Sure. They, they, just, they just will. And uh, you want to make sure that you're providing uh, the best possible experience to the people that you're selling to. Uh, Mark will, depending on what kind of glassware it is, he will even wrap handles and everything else in cut up swimming pool noodles. Yeah, that's um, another pro tip. Yep. And if you and you can buy it at the dollar stores, it's probably now you can probably get them going on clearance. We we buy them at garage sales. Okay. You know, I'd, I'd I'm going to jump here because uh, I have shipped. Um, oh, pebble. Oh, what's it called? Peanuts? No, I don't. Uh, I started out oh, with peanuts. Oh, 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 oh. I don't yeah, do don't, don't do peanuts. People hate peanuts. <laughs> Are you talking about the most the pebble art? Pebble art, okay. sand art. Okay, okay, popular in the 50s and 60s, but it was basically sand and little rocks glued to a piece of plywood. Okay. Um, I just shipped out two of those with pool noodles around the outside edge. Okay. And went from Kansas City to Arizona. And the customer was absolutely thrilled. I've got another, I've got another framed piece. Um, that is going to another um, one of our customers. Right. That's going to New York City. Pool noodles, paper, bubble wrap, bubble wrap. Do you use the larger bubble wrap or do you use the quarter inch? Both. I use the. For both. The, but you use. use I the, mainly use the three sixteenths. Okay. Because when I, I, I had I used to have a moderator on my channel, and she she swore by the larger bubble wrap. Look like it's the half inch bubbles, yeah. Well, with delicate pieces of glassware in China, sometimes you can't get into little nicks and crannies, with yeah. That's true. Stuff. So, so maybe you could do like with the, say, like the, the smaller bubble bubbles and then the larger bubbles. Anything that we buy and they send to us and it's got bubble wrap on it, we say we reuse it. Oh, yeah, right. We we'll, we'll use all of that. Now, uh, when do you determine if you're going to double box something, is, is it a, a value or is, is it? fragility of it or what it's usually the fragility of it right yes and if you're doing a vase um i, I mean I, i'm talking a substantial right eight to ten inches whatever i always sh shove paper down inside of it yeah and then bubble wrap and gotcha. then box and then it depends on the fra fragility of it. Right. I, mm -hmm. I may double box it. So. Right. But like I said, of 600 items that I've sold, I've had three three items break. That's tremendous. I mean, not tremendous that three broke, but tremendous that you had that such success. Yeah, but yeah. the, the one looked take, like take care one looked like a truck had run over it. Okay, probably what well, probably did. <laughs> well, I, well, that could be true. I just want to touch on one thing, and then I want to get into have you discuss your YouTube channel and what you do and everything. I just okay. want to touch off the top of your head. What do you remember? Like what your largest, your best flip was? Something that you paid very <laughs> little for and you made tons of money. Go ahead. I made a list for you. Okay. <laughs> Listen, his world revolves around a list. Go ahead. Okay. I bought. From an antique store, mind you, a Singer Featherweight sewing machine. Sewing machine. I paid thirty dollars for it. Put it on eBay. It sold for three hundred and fifty. Nice. I'm happy with that. Oh yeah. 
the customer was ecstatic. The um, that gravel that gravel art that I was just talking about yes. that went to Arizona. Mm-hmm. I paid five dollars for the pair of them. They sold for fifty eight dollars. Okay. Um, a mid century modern modern chunky lamp swag oh, yeah, swag lamp. Oh, that was a honey of a lamp. I'm it you was. I I almost didn't want to get rid of it. <laughs> you talking what I paid for it? Five dollars. I paid five dollars, and this was though at um, uh, we'll say it's Goodwill. Okay, it was one of those kind of thrift stores. Thrift store, yeah. Five dollars. I found the dang thing, and it was underneath the shelves. It wasn't on the shelves. It was underneath the shelves. There you go. go ahead. Sold for two hundred twenty-five dollars. Oh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> so it happens. Yeah. And I've had, I've had. Um, I still haven't figured this out. We have really good luck selling costume jewelry and people are buying it from overseas. Okay. That John Rivers piece. Now you are you shipping through the global shipping program yep, through yes, eBay I or do you ship direct or I through the global shipping, global shipping program. program. Okay. Yeah. I was scared to death to actually even ship overseas. Right. And and then I started reading about the global shipping program okay. and I signed up for it. Gotcha. I had some I've had some very good sales that have went overseas. Oh yeah. And the thing about it is is that I'm confident in the way I pack. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and it, the thing about it is is that <laughs> if you've packed it well enough and it's a piece of jewelry, costume jewelry, what are the likelihood that's going to break? Right. The only thing that you might have is if it gets stolen or gets lost in the mail. Yeah. But we're not on the hook for that because all we're on the hook for is getting it from getting it to Kentucky, getting it to Kentucky. Right. Yep. And then, it, then it's eBay's it's on eBay shoulders to get it to where it's going to be. Exactly. Go. But uh, don't be afraid to sell through the global shipping. Global shipping program. Because yep. we've been very, very lucky. And I've, I've purchased a couple of things from overseas and I've not had a problem. Uh, it's worked out pretty well. The one thing I just wanted to ma- uh, mention real quickly, and then we'll talk about your, your YouTube channel, was we you had discussed there's a place you do research on, and uh, it's basically Dottie, but it, it, the website is www.ddotty.com. Okay. Um, this is for carnival glass. Uh, right. I normally, and, and I'm not supported by the, I don't know this guy, Right. All I know is that he does some really good work. His website is excellent. He's kind of the worth point of the carnival glass world. Only you can go in. If you've got a piece of glass, you can go in and it's called Dodies. If if you're on your phone, all you got to do is scream into it, Dodie's Carnival Glass, and it's going to come up. Um, I put the link in the... um... Mark put the link in in there, in the chat. But you can can find patterns. He'll have stuff listed. If you you can tell anything at all about the piece, you can find it in there. It's by patterns. It's by manufacturers. It's by shapes. And his information is on point spot on excellent information he gives prices and his prices may go all the way back to 2000 and this piece sold in this color for this price in 2000 well it sold for this price in 2015 and then you'll see current prices 2022 this piece sold this piece sold in 2021 that is up to date, valuable information yes. that will cost you zero. Right, it's a free website. Yep. And this, any kind of a, a tip that I could give any, anyone is this is absolutely a wonderful website. I don't know how he makes his money. 
and I don't care. I don't know. Maybe he had rich relatives. Yeah, not, not your problem. <laughs> it's useful, so you take advantage of it. That he, that he does. So. But he does. He has got, oh, he's got international, if, if, if English carnival, Australian carnival. Um, a lot of people don't even know that they, that they, that exists, right. but it does. And it's just such an invaluable tool for anybody that is either a collector or somebody that's getting into the reselling, or let's say someone has passed and they've given you, you've inherited some carnival glass. This is the best place for you to go to try to get some information. Absolutely. It really is. But I want everybody to, to understand. Let's say grandma died. And sometime after the funeral, and everybody, the tears have dried. You found that you have inherited 50 pieces of carnival glass. You don't like carnival glass. Well, you look up on a site somewhere and they're saying, oh, this piece is worth this and this piece is worth that. And eBay says this and don't expect to get that price for your item. Just don't because in today's market, it's not going to happen. And I don't want to, I don't want to discourage somebody that's inherited a bunch of stuff. Right. Um, but right now, it is a buyer's market, not okay. a seller's market. It's kind of oversaturated yeah. with carnival glass. Well, not just carnival glass. Right. Uh, antiques. Uh, okay. People are worried about putting gas in their tanks. It's gone down yeah, a little true, bit. True, true. But there is a, there's a general, there's always going to be a little bit of uncertainty. But don't expect to get premium dollar for everything that you own. Because you will be disappointed. Okay. If, if you want to... Um, Move it. You need to. You, you want it out of your life. Find yourself um, a good reseller, somebody that won't mind setting on it for four or five years if they have to. Because a lot of people they don't realize that a lot of the merchandise that I have, I've owned for more years than some of you people have been alive. <laughs> okay. But. Um, be prepared. The general rule of thumb is this. If you are wanting to sell to a dealer, um, you're wanting to sell in bulk, get your best guesstimate of the market value. Gotcha. And be prepared. A dealer will not pay any more than approximately 35 to 40 percent okay if they have a brick and mortar store especially right because they have got to keep a roof over their heads and they have got to keep those lights on property uh, tax employees and, yep and they have to eat so realize if you're selling to a reseller someone else is going to market that further down the road right you can expect to get probably 35 to 40 percent. 35 to 40 percent when you're right. You're, okay. And you'll be lucky to get that from a lot of dealers. Right. I, and I'm just, I'm being honest with y'all. No, no, but, yeah, Mike's, uh, Mike's agreeing with him. Mike Crazy Card said, yeah, people are hard pressed right now. Definitely a buyer's market. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. But th there's, a, there's a bright point. Antiques are coming back. Yeah, well, this can't last forever. So eventually we'll come out of this. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. gas prices are coming down at least. Most of the country, anyway. But prices are going up now on carnival glass. Okay, good. Go ahead. All right. You ready to go to the next one? What do we have next? Talk about my YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I don't want to talk about your YouTube channel. I don't know where well, you're going I, with that. I don't know if you had a surprise. I thought I had, I thought I had a YouTube channel, too, but I guess maybe he does. Well, we're going we to talk one. about two old guys, right. vintage and and uh, resale. And uh, like Mark and Michael had said, everything's under the same name on all the social media. Uh, I wanted to repeat that I, uh, guys, you know, they watch my channel. I always include information from my guests. So I have their, their uh, 
their YouTube channel. I have their eBay store. I have their Instagram, and that's all in the description of the video. So why don't you tell the people a little bit about your uh, YouTube channel and tell people what, what they can look forward to when they come to your auctions and sales. Uh, well, it, it should be entertaining. It usually is. Uh, we are on at 5 o'clock on Sunday evenings, and that is Central Time. So it would be 6 o'clock you got Eastern Time Eastern. or 7 o'clock Arizona time all right i'm confused <laughs> which is what needs to happen all right hey we come on we come on right on right after uh re return of cajun roots johnny on sundays and uh let's see we have been very fortunate um we had a um special guest last weekend we will have another special guest this weekend it's cracking christine this weekend Yeehaw. uh last week it was janide's um and cowboy bob will be there cowboy bob will be there you might as well bring <laughs> oh, cowboy wait, bob wait, wait, wait. <laughs> because you gotta make one appearance every time it, you do a show it, it, this one's where the ladies <laughs> they love I them. If Aunt, Aunt Boo is still Cow here. cowboy bob ellis there you go. Uh, I got a lot of mileage out of Cowboy Bob. I'll tell you that. Uh, I'm sure, like I like I mentioned earlier, we've done this five months, and uh, I'm I'm sure that uh, we will do more than once a week, eventually. Uh, so. Please come join us. Like, subscribe. If you like our content, come back. If we're not your cup of tea, then thank you for stopping by. But if we're we're not your cup of tea, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, but I, I want you to know that there are, I have found some of the neatest YouTube sites out there. Just kind of tap dancing around. And it's, Subjects that I would never, ever in my entire life think that I'd ever look at. I watched a woman one day tear apart um, artificial flowers and make lampshades out of it. Okay. And I watched this woman for two hours making a, a, a dang old lampshade. And I enjoyed it. So there's something out there. Support these people. There are people out there, they, they just want to share what gives them joy they want to share what means something to them they want to find like people with like interests to like i think that's pretty pretty self-explanatory yes. we've met some of the greatest people i've ever met in my entire life with this in the last few months and aunt boo is one of them lambs sweet sweet people and uh, so supportive, and we are we are learning daily, and we're old, especially me. I'm I am old, and I tell that to people every every week. <laughs> Technology I, is, is goes in one end and out the other, but Mark is good at that, and so. Patrick, you do not make dumb commercials, and cat, <laughs> and cats making biscuits. Ooh, I want biscuits. I watch. I watch. I watch. I like Jambu make some biscuits. I hey, you know what? You and Mark can have a biscuit off because this man can make some dang old biscuits. I learned from an old Mississippi woman. There you go. But anyway, we okay. got this. Is okay. What you're seeing right now? This is our show. <laughs> I, I swear to you. And a lot, a lot of chit chatting, a lot of entertainment. There, there, well, you know what? A lot, a lot of neat, neat collectibles. And then, then we, then we will pick up something. We, right. a lot of times, we will generally bring something that's different. We're going to be participating. Uh, there's going to be a, another marathon. We did a this uh, summer ween. Yes, when Johnny uh, a while, while back. Yep. Well, there's another one coming up. And, and this all is things. all things vintage. And that is my bailiwick. Yes. So I'm going to be bringing stuff that some of these people probably have never, never even seen. thought yeah. about collecting. Yep. 
And if we sell something, that'll be great. If not, maybe somebody will, it'll trigger something in somebody. And that's what's important. Get them to come over and check out your channel. Yep. Okay, guys. Uh, as I always say, if you're enjoying my channel and getting value from it, please consider helping me all set some of the costs. I uh, greatly appreciate it. I have to purchase equipment, pay for subscriptions. And of course, like anything else, there's time and effort involved to bring you good educational content so you can grow your business. At Buy Me Coffee, PayPal, and Cash App. There's also a link to Randy's website where you can buy coffee, tea, spices, and old-fashioned oh. candy. And Randy is kind enough to pay me a commission at no cost to you guys. And if you buy something, you just put AE next to your name when you register. Okay. I always say time is your most valuable asset. So I'd like to thank Mark and Michael for their time. And also those of you that are here for the live and watching the replay, I greatly appreciate it. Just keep in mind, if you could, leave a thumbs up. Subscribe if you find the content interesting. And if you leave a comment, that helps the channel as well. So that'll do it, guys. We're going to try to have somebody on next Wednesday at 7 p.m. So thank you all for being here. We'll see some, you next week. Some, somebody less boring than me. <laughs> okay, guys. We'll see you next Adam, week. Take thank you now. so much. We really appreciate it.